The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the May 25th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you, can I, when you and I can make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'd love to serve you. So you can give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you've got a question but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. For that, send that off to Steve at TFN.com. And inside the subject, and if you'd be good enough to write radio show question. Now, if you're, in a, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, and you all should be, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got a mixed bag out there. The mix goes like this. The Dow's off 46. The S&P is up 31. The Nasdaq's up 300. The Russell's off 15. Semi's up 162. Tranny's up 112. It is definitely a mix out there. Gold is off 19. And silver's down 13 cents. While Light's Recruit is trading out at 71.99. That's up 44 pennies. Natural gas is off 6 cents. Trade out at 232. And the 30-year Treasury, 125.29 is a print there. That's off 21 ticks. So, what do we want to look at? Well, I think what we want to look at are these markets. What are they doing? So pretty easy with regard to levels to watch today. Really just one level. It's all about the NQ. That is the level of 13,979.25. If price closes above that, it'll negate its sell signal and suggest that we move higher. Move higher to where? Excellent question. For that, we just simply go type in on a daily basis. Let's go type in the A to B equals CD pattern out here. So the A point down here on uh, December the 28th, the B point up here on February the 2nd. February 2nd, well, that'd be nice if that actually... There we go. And then the C point of retracement down to the low on March the 13th. That was a 57.61 retracement. You can see that price is made the one to one A to B equals CD level. If price is able to take out this 13,979.25, the next price projection level becomes 14,591. That's to take a look at the daily NQ. If we look at the ES mini, just a good old fashioned consolidation with inside its daily profile at this stage here. Price got back to support. That was a support level of its slightly bullish structured weekly profile down at 41.13. Yesterday's low was 41.14. If we take a look at the Dow Equity Future contract, it has an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. Its initial price target is 32.495. In the case of the Russell 2000, the profile that was forming yesterday did take hold. The numbers have shifted, 17.9850 being resistance, and now price is testing support at 17.5650. If price closes below support, I would say it is likely going to go run down to test at least its swing point from May the 4th, and that could be anywhere between the range of 17.0790 to 17.0790. 143.50 out there. So to summarize, consolidation with the top inside the ES Mini, you still have a Rhodes Momentum Indicator top that's subject to, uh, well, we'll see uh, at the end of the day whether that's going to hold or not. You've got an A to B equals CD to the downside inside the uh, Dow, good old-fashioned consolidation going on inside of the Russell 2000. If we take a look at my other charts out there, the white background charts, we'll switch over take a look at those here momentarily. Just take a look at any kind of counts out here that might uh, be of interest to us. So let's Let's go take a look, see what we have. We're gonna. This is the in, this is the NQ's chart. We'll come back to that. Let's take a look at the daily time frame chart. So, what do we see out here? We don't really see much of anything else. Not anything additional other than. 
You do have the Dow and the Russell trading below red oscillator and change lines. So that's a bearish signal. The NQ trading above a green oscillator and change line and trading above the top of its profile. Its overall signal is neutral, period. Gets bullish when you close above 13,979.25. If you were looking to short, okay, if you're looking to short these indices, and I'm in that camp, and I'm considering this, just simply taking that short right now. Right here, right now, I will go take a look at the intraday charts before we just say that. But what I'm basically saying is you've got the best reward risk out here. And that is you could take it now. We're printing out a 13,958. 13,979 is the go, no-go zone out there. And if you close above it, you just simply close out that trade. Maybe wait till it gets a little bit close. Let's look at those intraday charts. Let's go see on those intraday charts if there's any kind of a uh, pattern that uh, we could pay attention to out here. So now on the intraday charts... What do we got? Boy, we got zip, nada, zilch. The only thing we've got is a 15-minute time frame chart that I can see that's going, well, I, I see another one. Hold on. So on a 15-minute basis, you've got a Rhodes Mintum indicator top, price above profile. It's going to go target that high. It's already trading into that swing point. That high out there is at 13,976 level. So that's what the 15-minute chart says. The 240-minute chart says you've got a TD9 count top, you're above its breakdown level, 13,934. Yeah, it's going to go test that level. So no, now is not the time to take that uh, short position out there, not at least based on the way that I'm taking a look at these intraday charts out here. And on a 10-minute, we're only at a um, – we're only at wave number, or not wave number six, but bar number six of a TD9 count. Shoot, let's go down to a five-minute chart here. Let's really get granular. And the five-minute chart says, yeah, no, there's no top – there's no topping signal. So just price running into that potential resistance level at that 13,979.25 area out there. What's the reason to go short? Good question. What is the reason to go short? Well, I don't know. Let's go take a look at market breadth right now. First, let's look at the short-term market breadth, and that would be the 30-minute. That's the shortest-term time frame that I have out here. Market breadth for the NQ, let's say S&P, and the S&P is bullish. No, I take that back. The S&P is bearish. Let's just look at the NDX 100. Let's stick with one thing out here. The NDX 100 shows at the moment, yeah, it's bullish, 49 above, 24 below. So it's going to go tag that 13,979 and it may, in fact, take that out. So let's cancel that idea out there. Let's look at the uh, uh, of the uh, uh, the other four time frames that we can monitor. And on those other four time frames, what we have out here for the NASDAQ, here's, here's, here's where it's suggesting, okay, find a spot. To consider taking that NQ short. Why? Let me just let me just refresh this. Let me just switch over to the S and or I'll just switch over to anything really. And then we'll come back here. That was the there we go. Yeah, we are bearish weekly, daily, 240 and 60. And it was bearish on that 30 minute. So it's just a couple of stocks, clearly, that are taking the markets higher out here. But if we do get a close above 13,979.25, we're at 13,980 as we speak right now. So if you were going to take that short position, uh, this basically would be about the time. Or wait for some pattern on an intraday basis out here. But it is up at resistance, so it's going to be interesting. Now, the other element that's interesting out here is let's take a look at the semis. So if we go take a look at the SMHs out here, which the SMHs yesterday formed an island top and an A to B equals CD pattern. But clearly it didn't care. That island top, that, that's a Gilligan's Island. That's Sayonara, baby. And the question is, can these markets really top without the SMHs topping? That's the question. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. 
when you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. The Dow's up 105, S&P's up 27, Nasdaq's up 318. And real quickly here, not to just focus in on the Nasdaq, but let's take a look at the last 10 years of the Nasdaq 100 and get a feel for where we're at right now. It turns out that May inside the NDX 100 over the last uh, decade has been a very uh, good month out here. It looks to me like it is the... Uh, it's either the fourth or fifth best performing month. That red vertical line right now that we're taking a look at, that shows you where we're at today. So in the case of the NASDAQ 100 over the last 10 years, over the last decade, it doesn't really top out until about the early part of June, then makes that nice bottom around the end of June, moves up higher into the July-August time frame, and then down into October. That's the normal 10-year cycle out there. Uh, we can take this back uh, 15 years. 15 years doesn't show us anything different, suggests that we should move higher. 25 years, the same kind of pattern out there. And uh, 37 years also suggesting the same thing. So you'd have to say that seasonally speaking, what we're seeing right now take place inside the NDX100, the NQ out there, and it makes that level that we were taking look is so key to watch today. And that's at 13, 979 and a quarter which is being threatened as we speak right now. So let's go take a look at a couple of stocks out here, some requests. Uh, the first one coming in from Nancy. And Nancy's question is, uh, what is Apple likely to do tomorrow? So, Nance, I think after that uh, first, you know, 15 minutes that we went through here, you've probably formulated something in your mind with regard to what it is that I've communicated. If you haven't, let me, let me, let me try to, to do that for you. And that is this. If you see a close in the NQ above 13,979.25, that'll tell us that we have a failed top inside the NQ. With Apple being in the number two waiting, one or two waiting inside the NDX 100, you'd have to say, with price here, Apple being above the top of its daily profile, odds would favor 
a move up towards that oscillator and change line of 174.97. Now, I can't tell you what tomorrow is really going to do, but I can give you some data points that would assist you in increasing the odds of what might unfold out here. So in the NQ, I'd watch that 13.979.25. Even if that doesn't happen, well, let's say that doesn't happen. If it doesn't happen, the NQ still retains its roads momentum indicator top. And it's not going to take away from the top that's inside the ES. It's not going to take away from the A to B equals CD down inside the uh, Dow. And if the NQ closes below 1756, that's telling us it wants to run lower. So in that case, if that's not taken out, and I know you're in an options trade and you're just kind of near the break even point, give or take, I would just take that. And take it. And I heard Basil as I was uh, logging in. Uh, he was talking about somebody and saying that was a gift. I'd just go ahead and say that's a gift uh, then. But you can watch that 13,979 and a quarter. And the weekly chart for Apple's got a TD9 count top. Uh, the monthly chart is, uh, you know, is, is it's a mixed bag out here. 168.79 is the top of the profile. We're above that. The green oscillator and change line. That is a uh, bullish kind of a signal out there. Um, if we look at Apple, just to take a look at seasonally, what does Apple do? APL, see if we can help Nancy out this way. So in the case of Apple, let's go back and take a look at the last decade. Last decade suggests, just like we looked at with the NQ, it should go make a top into June 7th. So we're not going to see anything really different here, I don't think, with regard to uh, Apple and the NQ and the NDX100. So, again, it makes that resistance level really key to watch. Another reason to consider just simply, uh, regardless of what may or may not happen, but you're close to break even, is just taking that, uh, that uh, beach ball home right now. Uh, as a matter of fact, we took a look at market breadth inside the uh, NDX100. It's bearish. It was bearish across the board. So it just gets back more towards that uh, gift type of idea out there, Nancy. So with regard to a 30-minute time frame chart, what is Apple communicating to you and I? The case of Apple, it's telling us what? Um, it's telling us it had a nice little bottom out there, Rhodes Mintum Indicator bottom, but it was unable to get across its 173.38 goal line. That was a TD9 count breakdown level out there. So um, no breakout here going to, to, to add to the idea of a further move higher tomorrow. Uh, you are in bar number two, it looks like, of a, of a higher close. So let's pull this up on a daily basis. We know that, well, certainly in bear markets, and we do have a top out here, not a bear market, let's say a market with a top, that typically the counter trend move would be a one to two bar, typically a two bar knee jerk type reaction. And in case here of Apple, uh, this is going to be, it looks like this would be bar number two. So you're getting a lot of indications to suggest, you know what, just take that trade off. You're close to break even and don't, don't sweat it out and don't worry about it. But you've got to do what you've got to do. I provided you with what I've got to do, which is give you that information as to where the bulls and bears are and what's going on inside the general market. So I hope that helps you out. Dano, he also wanted to kind of keep with the theme of the NQ. And he asked if we could go take a look at that DAX NQ correlation. So we most certainly can. We're going to switch panels out here. Let's get to it. That's this chart right here, or this set of charts, I should say. The top portion, oh, that's the wrong one. Well, we're just going to have to do this here manually, unless I've got it in a different spot. I do not. So we're going to do this here differently. So, okay. So up here, we're going to put in the NQ. So let's put in, let's do this here. Let me put in just the, the actual cash in. Um, no, I'll put in I'll put in QQQ. So that's what we'll put it up at the top. All right, and that way the profiles that are there they're going to uh, make sense. And what the quarterly? Oh, I didn't mean that. Sorry about that. See, you guys are seeing me do this live, and then you're seeing the old fat finger Steve. Okay, so we got that. Let's get rid of high grade copper. So let's change this out here. We'll just do this right here. So let's change that out. Let's get back to the correlation tool. Let's change from copper to the uh, DAX. Uh, shoot, what's the DAX symbol on this? Uh, give me a second here to get over. There we go. I always forget that XET piece of it. So now let's come back to the correlation tool. Let's open up the uh, chart here. Let's go ahead and input the uh, DAX where high grade copper was at. Where's the correlation tool? Here we go. Let's get the DAX in there. And uh, let's get the DAX up here as well. All right. So now they're getting a correlation between the DAX and the uh, Qs out here. And don't pay attention to the uh, profile levels inside the uh, DAX uh, chart. You can most certainly inside of the Qs. So this is, well, let me see what time period I've got set up on this. So let's first go. We, got to, we have to open up this uh, data set one more time. Oh, didn't want to edit the bar. Wanted to edit the chart. 
So let's open this up one more time, Dano. And sorry, you know, sorry to walk you through this, but it's the only way that I can do it. So right now we're set to a five day. That's about the smallest time frame out here that I can uh, put. I mean, I can put a small, but I can put larger time frames. But let's take a look at just simply. So this kind of when I look at a five day, it's kind of like a daily correlation out here. So here's the daily. I'll pull it back just a tad. Now, when bars are above the zero line, which 95 percent or 90, at least 90 to 95 percent of the bars are above the zero line. The message here, Dano, is that there is a directional correlation, directional correlation, higher, higher, lower, lower out there. And if we take a look at the DAX, whereas inside the uh, queues out here, the queues themselves never had a island top, uh, the um, uh, what did was the SMHs out there. But if we take a look at the, uh, the, the here, the Qs are trading above profile, but we're really going to focus on the NQ out there. It still is going to maintain the same type of correlation that we're looking at. But because you still have this island top, you can see that island top that's out here inside of the DAX. That was really one of the reasons, Dan, why when we were taking a look at the NQs in the early stage, I said, Steve, he's got a, a hankering for wanting to go ahead and try to go short the Qs. And it's really, mo it's, it's for a number of different reasons. And this is another one of those reasons out there. So, Dano, I hope that helps you out. But when we get back from this break, we're not done with Dano. We're going to go take a look at uh, uh, Micron, MU's the ticker symbol. We're going to look at Amazon for S&P, SBSW for Stash, and NVIDIA for Hector. Be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back.
back up, folks. So we're taking a look at the ticker symbol MU Micron out here. It's uh, printing out right now at about 68.69. Let me actually see if I've got a little bit of a data flow issue here or not. Uh, nope, we're pretty good. 68.65 is what I've got on my other screen out here. So what uh, Micron, let's see, what is Micron doing out here? And we're going to go back. And start with the monthly time frame, Dano. So on the monthly time frame, it's very clear to us. Uh, this like the question would be, why did price stop where it did today? In other words, why could we have identified where the sellers were at? And the answer is yes, right? I mean, this is like um, I, well, in any event. If, in, how do we know that? It was the top of that uh, monthly profile. That's at sixty nine seventy seven. The actual high today is sixty nine eighty five. So we know that price is dealing with that resistance level. Does that mean you need to sell your position? You're long at 58? No, it does not. But no one anticipate and expect that you were up at that resistance level. Okay, so you're up at resistance on the monthly. What are we doing on a weekly? The weekly has busted through two levels of resistance. The first was last week's on top of its daily pro, a pop of its weekly profile at 64.44. And last week, it closed above its TD9 count breakdown level, 65.12. The message there, Dano, is that price wants to now move to the next level. The next level would be 86.24. As we take a look at the daily time frame, do we see any kind of a topping pattern? The answer is we do not. All that we see here is an A to B equals CD to the upside. So let's try to draw that in. We don't have to try to draw it in. We're going to draw it in. So give me a moment here. Just getting rid of this A to B equals C to the downside. So we'll draw the A to B line, and we'll just simply move the B, A to B line, over to the C point just to give us an approximate area of where this is headed to. So we can see that we are already past the one-to-one -one level out here. And so what you're watching for is some type of bearish reversal candle. Now, if you're not familiar with your bearish reversal candles, Dano, you can subscribe to Mastery Probability. There's two workshops out there. There's at least one that will go through the seven bullish or the seven bearish candles. Once you learn one, you will then know the opposite, and then you'll know exactly what to be looking for and what to pay attention to. So you've got the A to B equals CD pattern that is in place out here. And now, as far as a top would be concerned, it would only be a bearish reversal candle that would, in fact, generate that for you. If we take a look at on the... Um, there's no, nothing else for me really to take a look at. So how are we going to call Micron? Micron is dealing with the sellers that reside on the top of the monthly profile. That's at 69.77. We're not seeing any reasons to sell. But, uh, you know, you want to have your seat belts fastened. So, Dano, that is uh, Moo. And uh, that's, of course, Tiger Woods. Uh, well, it used to be his favorite sake. That was you know, about a decade ago when he was up in the Orlando-ish area. Um, so let's go on to our, our next request out here. The next request coming in from S&P. And S&P wants to take a look at Amazon. Amazon, which does have a TD9 count top, is just simply consolidating S&P with inside its daily profile. Now, what we can see here is this is a bearish structured profile. So the sell zone is between 115.80 and 117.67. The price were to close above... Um, 11860, it negates the TD9 count top and says that we had much higher. Now, Amazon, very much like the NQ or very much like the NDX100, has a daily TD9 count top and a weekly TD9 count top out there. All the reasons for us to be cautious. Now, in the case of Amazon, the monthly resistance level that it's dealing with is that oscillator and change line. So resistance on the monthly, resi or a top on the uh, weekly, a top on the uh, daily, and right now price is below its green oscillator and change line. S&P, I would not be surprised if we see Amazon at least go target the bottom of its daily profile out there. And it's very possible that what yesterday was was the B point, the C point of an A to B, small A to B equals CD to the downside out there. We're not going to worry about that. Now, the swing point from two days ago did volume of 67 million shares. So far, we've done 25. So it does look like we are pushing lower with volume, but that could um, slow down at day's end. Um, so that's what I see when I take a look at the amazing one, and that is Amazon. So I do hope that helps you out, S&P, and uh, you have yourself a terrific Thursday. The next request out here kind of coming in uh, by email. So let me get over and actually see what the question is. It's SBSW, a must sell, and that's coming from Stash. It must sell. Well, this is trading below a TD9 count daily, uh, TD9 count bottom today. So it looks like that pattern is going to get negated. So uh, if you were long this, uh, closing below that suggests lower price. The weekly chart 
does not have a bottoming signal. The weekly chart says it would need a bullish reversal candle, and if that were to form, then it would generate a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. On a monthly time frame, and the month is not over, we're nearing that, but price right now is trading below its breakout level at 739. It's not a ton below it, but it is still below it. So SBSW does not look good. So, uh, Stash, you are right here. It looks like it's now, when you say it's a must sell, it's not a must short. But are prices headed lower? Well, it looks that way because I don't see any bottom signals whatsoever for any kind of a time frame out here. Um, and in fact, on the weekly basis, let me see here if we have a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. So the B point um, has volume of, I'm looking at my other screen, 20 million shares. And it was closed below last week with 15.3, and you're only at 9.5. So you're still trading below this swing point. It doesn't mean you don't have an A to B equals CD to the downside. It just means you don't have a confirmed one. How about the monthly chart? Monthly swing point had volume of 75 million shares. You're at 68 right now. Hmm. So you could get a monthly you could get a monthly A to B equals CD to the downside. But Stash, I'm with you. I'm on board with you. There's no reason to be holding a long position in SBSW, at least none that I can find. So I think you're right on the ball there. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. The next request coming in from Hector. Hector and Patty, they want to take a look at NVIDIA. NVIDIA on a roll. That's an understatement out here. Trading out at 388 and change out there. And if we're looking for topping signals, well, we just simply don't have them. This is negating a monthly TD9 count top out there. It's looking pretty darn beautiful. The question is, where is Amazon headed to? So for that, I think we're going to go back to the black background screen. So if you give me a moment here, we'll change over to those. We'll pull up our throw. We do have the three background charts up there, NBDA. And we're mostly going to be focused on long-term charts out here. So let's open these up. And now, let's take a look at uh, Fibonacci expansions. Let's look at the long-term A to B equals CD points. But first, let's look at the Fibonacci expansions. So let's get that tool all set here. This is NVIDIA, and this is a monthly time frame that we're taking a look at out here. Let's go to uh, expansions. We're going to go from the swing point high of November of 2021 down to the low of October of 2022. So the 1.272 expansion of that set of swing points is at 411.30. So I would say that the next price target area is 411.30. Now there's no topping signals whatsoever. Now if, in the case of uh, NVIDIA, if it were to gap down, let's say tomorrow, it were to gap down, then that could create a major island uh, top out there. But that's only if, and let's not worry about ifs out here. The swing point that Amazon is dealing with on a monthly basis did volume of 1.08 million. We're at 845, so it's going to come in lighter. Doesn't mean it's not an A to B equals CD to the upside. Do I dare draw that in? If I were to draw that in, well, I guess I'm going to dare to draw that in. The A point, you'd start all the way back here at 2018. That's your A point. Your B point is out at that swing that we looked at in November 2021. We know the C point out here. And so one to one, A to B equals CD. Well, that only gets us up to about the 423 level. But look at where this is trading on the left-hand side. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Hector is headed higher. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Yeah, still a mixed bag out there. Dow's down 200. S&P's up 18. NASDAQ 100, 286. The upside, Russell down 25. Semi's up 168. That's over a 5% move out there. That is a big move inside the SMHs. We'll take a look at those momentarily. First, let's take a look at a couple of requests out here. Uh, the first one is a take a look at XBI. This is for McGuppy. Uh, I guess I didn't have that ready for us. Uh, sorry, but I thought I did, but... Uh, Let's uh, let's let's get it. Uh, let's let's get it ready. Uh, do we take care of Amazon? Yeah, I think we took care of Amazon. So let's go to uh, XBI. Let's uh, throw that up here and see what we've got. I think there was another request was for Mer Moderna mRNA. Okay, let me uh, write. Let me mRNA. Okay, so we take a look at XBI. Wow. So XBI formed a TD9 count top that remains in place out here. There may be even an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. It doesn't. Yeah, there, there was. There was even that. But this TD9 count top is still the one that has uh, capped off the highs out there. Now what we've got is prices trading below the bottom of its profile. And so I would say that if XBI closes below 83.86 today, what that's signaling to you and I'm a guppy is a move down to its breakout level of 79.47. Now that's a daily chart. Let's go take a look at the weekly chart. The weekly chart is in bar number eight of a TD9 count. That should complete this week. But the bar number nine would need to close above bar number five out here. So likely the TD9 count is really subject to not forming out here. Uh, but what we can say is that with the daily trading below profile support, it should take the weekly chart back to its oscillator and change line. So right now, McGuppy, we have both 79.47 to 80 to 8107 as the price target area and then we look at the monthly chart it appears that it's uh, oscillator and change line is going to act as a real key level of resistance out there so it does look like xb wants to continue to move uh uh, uh lower out there and 79.47 ish being a target area 30 minute time frame chart does not have a bottom signal it is in wave number seven that's extended itself out there that could be a bottom. That way that gets confirmed is with a higher low on a 30-minute time frame out here. So XBI, this will be day number two of consecutive moves to the downside out there. Um, you know, in this bearish uh, mode here, it typically does, looks like four days fairly often out there, four-day moves to the downside. So it does look like you've got some, some poor weather conditions 
for XBI McGuppy. So I do hope that that helps you out. And thanks much for taking the time to write in. Let's go check out Moderna out here. MRNA is a ticker symbol. Well, that's not it. I swore I put it in there. That's not it. Well, Stevie can swear all he wants. He's going to have to. Oh, there it is. There we go. So now we take a look at Moderna. This generated a nice bullish Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. It did it when it generated that bullish hammer candle back on May 18th. And then it took price on a daily basis up to where that it did yesterday. Why did price stop there? Turns out that that move yesterday was nothing more than a test of that red oscillator and change line and the bottom of its weekly profile. The bottom of its weekly profile is also the center, 148.18. So that's a strong level of resistance. So who wanted Moderna? Moderna was ELO. So ELO, you've got strong resistance up at that uh, 138, that uh, oscillator and change line on the weekly time frame. Monthly chart's got no bottom signal, you're below profile, so that's not, I, I take it back. It's got a TD nine count bottom that has led to a sideways consolidation. And basically, it's been consolidating like that since June of 2022. So for one year, Moderna has been consolidating out there. So what's the likely outcome? Don't know. Uh, price is back inside its daily profile. Let's open up the daily time frame. Let's try to give the best George Kell play-by-play -play that we can out here. You're back inside the profile. Remember, the bottom is 123.84. That's a likely target. 126.39 is um, the center of his profile. That's where it's trading right now. And the top was up at 131.50. So it should at least target 126.07. It's also going to change on you get below that, the bottom of the profile. As far as volume, the swing point out here on May 17th was 2.5 million shares. So far today, you've done 1.2. So you're moving into that swing point with a pretty good volume. It should go test at least the top of that swing. The top is at 126.99, and the uh, bottom of that uh, daily profile is at 123.84. That's the zone where Moderna is targeting. So I hope that helps you out, uh, ELO. And uh, thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Any other requests? Um, so those in IWM are the donors to the Magnificent Nine winners. Um, well, that's a way to take a look at it. Okay, so no other requests out there. Let's pull up the SMH is actually... Any divergences in the VIX? Uh, good question. Um, so let's. Uh, so it's a question we're going to have to answer. That question, Fletch. We've got to switch screens. So let's go take a look at that. Uh, to do that, we'll go over to our black background charts, and I need to get something that says VIX. Where did I put those charts? So it might be closed out. Here we go. VIX primary. Now, um, with regard to divergences, let's pull up that chart. Which one is it? Is it this one? Was it that one? No, it wasn't that one. Hmm. Okie dokie. Uh, is it uh, this one? There we go. Okay. So here's our divergence chart. So on divergences, let me just move this to the downside. So on the VIX, um, we really don't because the, the VIX here, if we take a look at this Fletch, what we can see, I'll draw in a line. Let me get over here to a line tool. So here what we can see is that we've got a rising VIX, you know, which is that, that arrow, and we have falling price in the ES Mini. So no divergences there. Good question, but no divergences uh, that we've got out here with regard to the ES Mini. And that's what the VIX is really taking a look at um, out there. So I don't think any reason for us to go further. But great question. And uh, thanks so much for taking the time to ask. Um, SMHs. We were going to go take a look at the SMHs because, you know, I posed that. Quote. Well, you know what? We're on, I'll stand the black background charts out here. Let's take a look at the SMHs. Let's try to figure out if we can figure out what they are doing. So the SMHs, well, that's pretty cool. Thank, I'm glad that we pulled that up. What are the SMHs doing? Here, Stevie thought these things were headed to the moon. And now that we find that out, well, or that we pull up these charts, we find out, well, maybe not so fast. Why is that? Well, because the moon is located at 140.03. The high so far of today is 140.25. Price to trade out right now at 13963 So the SMHs... If they are going to generate this, uh, what looks like a very bullish set of charts out here, we're going to need to see a close above 140.03. And if we get that, well, then we're likely going to go target its highs out here. Now, the highs inside of the SMHs, let's see when the actual high came in. Was it 
41. It was the month of November of 2021. The volume out there was 170 million shares. But even if we close in it, which looks like we will, with lighter volume, it still could move up and test the top. So it makes that 140.03 a real key level for us to be watching with regard to the SMHs. No reason for us to go on to the daily and the weekly at this uh, stage and try to identify A to B equals CD patterns because they just don't mean a thing until SMH has that swing. And that swing will be a close of 140.03. You got the ES Mini or the S&P trading up 9, 17 points. The Dow's down 199. The Russell's off 24. Where's the Dow likely headed? You know, that's a great question. I think we could probably answer that by looking at its horizontal trading range boundary lines. Where do you think it's headed to? Let's answer that question when we get back from this break. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Now, folks, so the chart that we've got up on our screen out here, this is the uh, chart for the uh, Dow Cash Indice. This is the weekly time frame. Those green uh, horizontal lines that you see, those are referred to as horizontal trading range uh, lines. This is a tool or technique that was taken from Bud Rolfs, longtime contributor, contributor here at uh, TFNN. Uh, all of his work was done uh, manually. I loved what he did, and I just simply automated that process. When I say automated the process, what the process is doing right now, it's taking all of this data that is on the screen. So this data here takes us back to 1997. 
So it's taking all of that data and what it's identifying on a weekly basis are the opens and closes. And it's looking for the largest number of opens and closes. Turns out in the Dow Jones cash indice, that level would be 10,558. That's 186 times on a weekly basis priced opened and closed at about that area. The next largest number came in at 13,179. There was 46 of those. That set up the horizontal trading range. Then it's easy. Once you've got that distance, then you have the exact same distance for all the lines above and below. Now, the vertical lines, those are your channel lines out here. So from a horizontal standpoint, we know that 34,152 has been a strong area of resistance inside of the Dow. On a weekly basis, we've seen 13 opens and closes at that level. So you can't bust them up. What do you try to do? You try to bust them back to the downside. And the downside out there would turn out to be about 31,530. It really is 31,530. Uh, but you do have that also the rising trend line out there. So no idea. But that's where price is likely headed to inside of the Dow. It couldn't bust out that horizontal trading range at 34,152. Now it's going to go try and target the, the bottom of the rising price channel as well as the horizontal trading range that has acted as support at least eight times during the last um, about a year or less than a year out there. So that's what's going on in the market. Uh, let's just make it real simple today. Just one thing that you've got to watch. And that one thing you better watch is the NQ. And that level's at the 13, 979.25. If you close above that, there's no top, at least inside the NDX 100. Folks, stay tuned for all the great programming. I'll see you back here on Fantastic Friday. Please have a terrific Thursday. Take care.